Hello, my name is Skip Laratonda. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and I'm certified in Microsoft Excel. And I wanted to do a real quick video um, because there's a lot of people out there trying to use Microsoft Project or have been using it and just, um, just are not using it correctly. So I want to point out by saying that I have courseware that I have developed and I've been teaching this class for uh, probably around 35 or 40 years and I've enhanced the courseware through multiple levels of Microsoft Project. And if you take a look um, in my courseware, this is my table of contents for my level one course. I'm not going to go through each lesson here, but what I want to point out to you is, like I said, just when you're starting to use Microsoft Project for the first time, there's some things you have to keep in mind. Uh, and I want to go through them right now. Starting out, uh, getting familiar with the interface is like getting familiar with any other interface, including Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. Some of the tools that you'll use most often on the interface, I put on the whiteboard here. And I want you to notice there's a title bar, like in most applications. There's a quick access toolbar up at the upper left-hand corner. And I modify that to put icons on it that I used most often. There's the ribbon, which has been around since 2007. Notice that there's a time scale that runs horizontally across the screen. There's a, uh, a timeline that also runs across the screen. We won't use the timeline that often, but we will use the time scale a lot. Um, looking at the Gantt chart, the Gantt chart in Microsoft Project is really comprised of a Gantt table and a Gantt chart. The Gantt table will have the task mode, it'll have an indicator column, it'll have the name of the task, it'll have a duration, and you'll see in a minute that there's other, there's other columns on the table and headings on the table, and you can, you can modify those to fit your needs. But the common one is task name, duration, scheduled start, scheduled finish, and then predecessor information. The, the tools that you will use most often, uh, and I want to point them out to you, is the scroll to task button. It's over in the editing group. It's under the task menu. Way at the right there, you'll see under the editing group, there's a scroll to task. Right next to it, off to the left a little, is the information, the task information button. You'll use the task information button a lot. Also notice there's a schedule mode. You can schedule manually or you can schedule automatically. That's the first thing I'm going to point out to you is that when you launch Microsoft Project, make sure you start it in the automatic mode. Before you even start typing tasks, before you put in any durations, because it's not retroactive, what you need to do is you need to make sure that the mode is auto scheduled. If you don't do that, you take all the dynamic features out of the product. And a lot of people don't know to do that. Once you get more and more experienced, then maybe you want to look at a manual mode. But until you get familiar with project and you understand how it works, you should make sure that mode is in automatic. Notice there is a unlink and a link task buttons that I have pointed out here. The link is on the left hand side there and the unlink is on the right hand side. This is in the scheduling group under the task menu and I have it labeled here. There are many different task relationships. There's a finish to start, there's a finish to finish, there's a start to start, and there's a start to finish. But the most common that you'll see is when one task finishes, the next task will start. Since it's used 85, 90% of the time, they put a button, they put an icon called a link task button. When you click that, that will link the task finish to start. You can always modify the ones that, that need to be, the task relationships that need to be changed. Uh, 
And you can unlink the task there with the finish to start. You can unlink it. Notice there's an indent, which they call a demote, if you look at older literature. And there's an outdent button, which allows you to promote a task. And I'll show you an example of that as I go through real quickly on this. So those are the most important quick icons that you're going to be using as you work through the software. If we continue on here, first thing I want to do, so I want to show you the courseware here one more time. Because in my first lesson, I want you to notice that the duration, if you look under introductory comments there, that takes care of a lot of different things uh, to set up initially when you work with project. Introductory comments is the Gantt chart view appears when you start a new project. You know, it's a Gantt table on the left. It's a Gantt chart on the right. They call the combinational view just a Gantt chart. A duration is your estimate of how long a task will take. It's not precise. That duration that you put in there is just an estimate. And a good rule of thumb is, I tell everybody, until you get experienced, double that time. If you think it's going to take three days to do something, you better make it a week or you better make it six days. A milestone is a goal or checkpoint in your schedules. Milestones, uh, milestones, by definition, have zero duration and no resources. By default, all the tasks are scheduled to start as soon as possible. As soon as you type in the task and you hit enter, it's scheduled to start as soon as possible. And you'll see that when we start working on it. And the quickest way to sequence tasks is to link them with the link task button. That gets the flow going, okay? So let me demonstrate this to you real quick here and show you what I mean. If you click here, I'm gonna make sure, first thing I'm gonna make sure is I'm gonna go into mode and I'm gonna make sure I'm auto scheduled here. And you'll be able to see down at the bottom left-hand corner down here, way down at the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the word ready. That's a status indicator and if you use Excel, you know you have to look at that status indicator periodically. It'll help you in the application. A lot of people don't even look down there. You have to keep your eye on that status indicator. Right now, it's ready to enter data. It'll tell you different things as you go through the application, just like it does in Excel. But notice there's also the auto schedule button down here. You can click on that and you can click auto schedule. But make sure the first thing you do is you select auto schedule. I'm going to go up here and type in task A, hit enter. I'm going to put in task B, hit enter. I'm going to type in task C and hit enter. And I'm going to put in task D and I'm going to hit enter. I want you to notice that the default duration is one day. The question mark just means that you should address it because that, that was the default. You don't have to. Question mark, so question mark just means that you just didn't, you, you didn't type anything in there. But I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make task A 1D. I'm going to type in 1D and hit enter. You don't have to hit the drop down arrow. Uh, task B, I'm going to make it 2D and hit enter. Task C, I'm going to put 1W for week and hit enter. In task D, I'm going to put in a 0D and I'm going to hit enter want you to notice off to the left the Gantt chart bars are all scheduled to start as soon as possible. It just so happens to be today's date is October the 18th. Notice Sunday is October the 17th so all four of those tasks are scheduled to start on October 18th as soon as possible. The next thing, once you type these in, and notice I have zero days for duration on task D, and it goes in as a milestone. Notice I did not type anywhere in here the start dates. I didn't type any of these finish dates. If you type a start date or you put in a finish date here, you take all the dynamics out of project. Do not do that. There's a time to do it. That should be the exception and not the rule. The next thing you want to do is you want to select all the tasks. I select all the tasks just like you would in Excel by clicking the heading and I click the link task button. When I click, 
click the link task button, look what it does to the tasks. It throws them all out to the right on a finish to start relationship. And notice it puts the predecessors in over here in the predecessor column. They weren't there before. Now, this just gets things started. Notice when task B can start. First of all, task A doesn't have a predecessor. It's the first task. When can task B start? Start. When task A finishes. When can task C start? When task B finishes. When can task D start? When task C finishes. So we got the flow going there. Now, I want you to notice something here that all this color, there's a color out here to these bars. And if you go in this Gantt table somewhere and you just right click, just right click in it, you can pick bar styles and it'll tell you what these colors mean. It'll give you a legend to tell you what the colors mean. But what I want to do is I want to run a Gantt chart wizard. And if you go into the quick access toolbar up here and you pick more commands, and then you pick choose commands from, and I don't pick the popular commands, I pick all commands. If you scroll down through here, you will see something called a Gantt chart wizard. I already added it. I already selected it and clicked that. I added it to the quick access toolbar. So it's up here. And that Gantt chart wizard, you'll use it a lot. A lot of people don't even know it's, that it's available. I'm going to click on that Gantt chart wizard. And it welcomes me very politely. I click next. And I want to show the critical path. Now, if you're not familiar with a critical path, a critical path consists of critical tasks. tasks. And the textbook definition of a critical task is when it doesn't complete on time, the schedule doesn't complete on time. You cannot meet the end date. It might have something to do with the next task. I get a lot of people say, and I say, what's a critical task? And they say, well, it has to get done before something else can happen. I get, well, yeah, that's, that, but that's not the textbook definition. The textbook is a critical task is a task, and if it doesn't happen on time, you don't meet the end date on the project. So I want to show critical path. Let me go to next. And... I'm going to pick custom task information in this wizard because the nice thing about that is when I go to next, to the left of the bars, I can pick percent complete. I can pick total slack time or float time, depending on how you, you're familiar with the terminology. I'm going to pick percent complete to the left of the task. And to the right, I want to put in resource names. Now, we're going to assign resources. That's That would be a future lesson. But you can go ahead and customize this Gantt chart with this wizard. I'm just going to finish it. And I want you to notice when you do that and you format it and then you exit the wizard, I want you to notice what happens. Notice it shows the critical path. And I can zoom in down here at the bottom left-hand corner. And then I can click on task A. And rather than try to position that with this horizontal scroll bar, I can just go up to scroll to task, and it'll put task A right in the middle of the screen. And then I'm going to move this vertical line over to the left of duration, maybe to clean this up a little bit. And notice what I have so far. Notice I put in my tasks. I put in a duration. They all started as soon as possible. I got them all linked with a finish to start relationship. The next thing you would want to do here, and, and, and by the way, I want you to notice that all these tasks are critical. So the critical path consists of task A, task B, task C, and task D because they're, they're all tied with a finish to start relationship that makes them all critical. So the next thing you'd want to do is you want to schedule a start time. So in the second lesson, I'll show you where you can go in and you can click project. This is a project thing and you can click on project information. When you go into project information, notice that you can schedule from a start date or you can schedule from a finish date. If you schedule from a finish date, okay, you can type in, you can put in a finish date here. And it'll calculate the start date based on your durations. 
So that's why it's grayed out. Or some people like to schedule from a start date. If you schedule from a start date, which is the default, you'll put in a start date. So let's pick a start date. Let's say I want to want to start this way out on, eh, let's pick November the 1st. Notice when I click OK and I go back into that, it's under project, under project information. What it does is it calculates a finish date based on the start date that I selected and my durations. I want you to notice that everything's pushed out now until November the 1st. It moved everything out to the left from today's date, which was October 18th. It moved it out to the start date. So what I ended up doing is I ended up scheduling my project based on a start date. And it calculated that finish date for me based on the durations that I had. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that when you start working with, with Microsoft Project more and more, you'll notice that out of the box, if you go into Project, Change Working Time, I want you to notice that there are just three calendars. There's a 24 hours calendar, there's a night shift calendar, and there's a standard calendar, which is the default calendar. That standard calendar, if you take a look here, when I go into project information, notice that that calendar is what's selected over here on the right. It selects the standard calendar. Now you could pick the 24 hour calendar or a night shift calendar. I'm not gonna go into detail with those, but the standard calendar is what is the default calendar. And it schedules, it schedules cost. It calculates cost rather based on, it calculates cost based on working hours. And the working hours for the standard calendar is Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to noon, and 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., five days a week. If you have modifications to that, you can surely do it. It's in a future lesson. But I wanted to point that out. The standard calendar is Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock in the morning to noon, and 1 o'clock p.m. to 5. And then finally, what I wanted to point out to you is that if you go into File, and if you go into Information, and notice over here to the right, it says Project Information. If you click on that and you go into Advanced Properties, this is where you can put in the title of the project. Maybe the subject, or the author, or the manager of the project, or the company name. Um, all this information in the properties here helps populate your reports. So when you do your reports, your reports are a lot more descriptive. So keep in mind, that's where that's done. And then, in lesson three, I will show you. Well, I have lesson three here already that we could run real quick for you. So I'm just going to open it up on my desktop. This is the practice problems I provide with my course. Notice in lesson three here, um, I have a lot of tasks and I put in durations and I want to build, I want to build a structure. And it just so happens that under risk assessment, Brainstorming potential risks, eliminate the impact of a risk, and building a risk plan are all sub-tasks underneath a summary task called risk assessment. And I want to show that on my, on my Gantt chart. So that's where these indent and outdent buttons come in. Or demote, and, and that demote, remember if I said that the indent task is more a demote because you're putting it under something and the left arrow is the outdent task or a premote. What I want to do is I want to highlight three, four, and five and I want to hit the indent task and look what happens. When I click that, they move under risk assignment and notice that whatever duration I had in for risk assignment, 
gets recalculated. Even if you had something in there, it don't make any difference. It just gets recalculated based on not only the duration of the subordinate tasks, but the relationships. Since they were all a finish to start relationship, it's six hours. Six hours is 0.75 days. And if I zoom in a little bit, I want to show you something. You'll be able to see these. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to scroll to task. And I think you'll be able to see, I'll zoom in a little bit more because I want you to see these, that summary bar there. I'll do it one more time. There you go, and I'll scroll to task. Notice that summary bar. This is, th that, that tells me that risk assessment is a summary task. And the subordinate tasks underneath that are brain, uh, are the brainstorm potential risk. Estimate the impact of each risk and build a risk plan. And I can even zoom out maybe one more time to show that a little bit better. So you can see that as a grouping right there. Also, now, I'm just using this as a demonstration. You'll have your own summary tasks and your own subordinate tasks. But notice 7, in my case, 7, the whole way through 14. That's all part of a product design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demote those. And let me go to it so you can actually see where I'm at here. So I'm going to click and go to scroll to task. And I might have to zoom out a little bit so you'll see that a little better. Yeah, I'm going to definitely have to zoom out a little bit. More than a little bit. There it is. So there's my product design. Notice my product design shows a summary bar in the Gantt chart. And notice it's comprised of tasks 7 through 14. 7 through 14, all the way down here. And that's where it ends, over here. Now, keep in mind, you could always right-click in the Gantt table, in the Gantt chart, and you could pick bar styles. And sure enough, if you go down, you'll see this appearance being a summary task. So it'll help you understand what's going on there. Underneath electrical, notice that I have these three tasks or four tasks here are all part of the electrical design. So I'm going to I'm going to demote those. And when I demote those with this demote button, notice what happens. Notice I have now a second level. And matter of fact, mechanical has I have two two tasks under mechanical design and I'm going to de 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 demote that. And when you see that and I zoom out a little bit what you're able to see here is the, the the high level summary task is product design there's two summary tasks underneath it which are electrical and mechanical and those electrical summary bars and that mechanical summary bar better add up to the same length as the product design summary bar and you can see the subordinate information underneath it also down here under product testing it just so happens that I have electrical and mechanical testing and I can go ahead and I can I can demount those so you get a nice flow to the schedule, and you can add some organization when you use those demote and promo buttons. But in summary, there there is a there's a procedure people ask me all the time. Like, uh, you know, can you give me a procedure, something that would help me out to to explain a little better how you'd how you'd go about working with with Microsoft Project. And, and I do have a procedure for you, and let me get it here. Let me see if I can't find the procedure. And this is what it looks like here. I have a procedure for creating a project. And I'll keep it on screen here, but notice you... you you're going to open a new project with Microsoft Project Application. Under the Task tab and the Task group, make sure you get that mode to auto, auto schedule. Because if you don't, you're, you're going to take all the dynamics out of the product. So make sure you get auto scheduled before you start. Create a task list. Just put in the name. Don't worry about what's going to be summary, what's going to be subordinate. You know, design from the top down. And You know, in other words, just go ahead and just Put everything in there. Throw in your summary tasks and subordinate tasks. You can always move them around. Enter the task durations. And then you're going to enter product project summary information. 
Now you're going to pick a start date. That's number six. I showed you how to do that in the second lesson. We did that real quick. Uh, number seven, it doesn't make any difference when you do that. You select all the tasks and you pick a finish to start relationship to get the flow going. I guess in, in my lessons, I went ahead and I just picked a finished start relationship. I picked all the tasks. I clicked the link button. And then I picked the project start date. So I just sort of switched around six and seven there. Number eight, we indented tasks to, to form summary tasks and subordinate tasks under the summary tasks. And then in, in future lessons, you know, if, if you... Um, if you contact me, you want to get in touch with me and, and you need some help, um, just my email is uh, profskiplaritonda at gmail.com. So I'll write that down for you here. I hope this, this short video helped and it's, it's able to just get you started with Microsoft Project. It's prof skip. La Rotonda at Gmail. Dot com. And you could see information on my training schedule, online training schedule at A V I T dot ws there's my website so i hope this video helped best of luck using microsoft project